Welcome to this pre-recorded worship service from Maple Grove United Church here in Oakville, Ontario. I'm the Reverend Kerry Stover in ministry with the members and adherents of this wonderful worshiping place. This is where the spirit soars and the heart finds a home, and where on this Sunday, November the 1st, All Saint Day, All Saints Day, we will be sharing in communion. So if you need to pause right now, please do so and go and get a, a piece of cracker or bread and some juice. And then you will be able to participate at that point in the service. If you're watching this on Sunday, November the 1st, I invite you to join with this community in a Zoom coffee time at approximately 11 a.m. In fact, come in a little bit early and so we can have time with our coffee or tea or whatever beverage you want to share what's going on in our lives. I will welcome all of you to that. The Zoom link went out in Thursday, Thursday's E! News. Look for it there. Many thanks to all those that make this pre-recorded worship service possible. Dr. Deborah Henry, our music director, Aaron Rosen, our accompanist and children's choir director, for Leslie Stacy and Liz Bryant, who are our scripture readers today, and for Joan Vinyl Cox, Pat McKee, Al Weeble, and J.C. Burabay for their technical abilities, and of course for Bobby Joe, who, well, she knows why I thank her for keeping me on the straight and narrow track. Friends, I'm going to invite Leslie Stacy to talk to us about the pajama drive at Kerr Street Mission. Welcome, Leslie. Hi, my name's Leslie Stacy, and I'm with the Outreach Committee. The pajama drive has been a big part of Maple Grove's Christmas outreach for years. Our congregation has never failed in ensuring every child registered with the Kerr Street Ministry receives a cozy pair of pajamas under the tree on Christmas morning. This year, our job will be no different. However, your outreach committee is asking you to do something a little different. We know that these days, no one wants to enter a local mall or store unless they really need to. So we will do the shopping for you online. We're asking you to donate $30, $60, or $90, depending on what you can spare to the pajama drive. $30 will provide us with enough money to buy pajamas, socks, and some food for one child. There are lots of ways to make sure that you can participate in the pajama drive. Please leave your checks and note on the checks it's for the pajama drive in the lockbox on the brick wall beside the back entrance. Mailing checks to the church is another option. A third option is to go to the Maple Grove United Church website. Go to the Please Donate Here button, choose option 9, and then type in Pajama Drive. You have given generously over the years, and we know that this year you will give generously again. We look forward to making our delivery to Kerr Street, knowing every child in their program will be opening a new pair of pajamas on Christmas morning. Thank you on behalf of the Outreach Committee. Thank you, Leslie, for that inspiring message of how we can help especially those that are without at this time of year and heading into the winter season. Now, friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to Aaron play our prelude composed by Johann Sebastian Bach.
Friends, as we come together, once again, I light this tallest candle as a symbol of the Christ light in our lives, the Christ light that prevails over our sorrows, and so that that light enfolds us in everything that we do and brings hope and joy into our lives. I light this second candle for All Saints Day, those saints that we will remember today either in our own time or during the service, those saints that taught us so much about our faith, about religion, bringing God's Word to the world. And I light this last candle, the shortest candle, but perhaps one of the most important, for all of those that are seeking for saints in their lives. They may not have been touched by saints, so we light this candle that God will embrace them with love, comfort, and hope. Let us now join together as we say responsibly our call to worship and prayer of approach as displayed on your screen. I will say what's in light type, and I ask you to say with me everything that is in bold type. Creator Christ and Spirit, God of life and blessing, you created all that exist. In Christ, you offer your redeeming love to every soul in every situation, in the past and as it is now. So it is our greatest joy to be united by your Spirit and with the company of saints in the community of your people, stretching throughout the generations all around the world you love. We join our thanks and praise to the voices of all your saints, both past and present, both in heaven and on earth, with worship and who adore you saying together, all blessing and glory, all wisdom and thanksgiving, all honor and power belong to you, O God, this day and forever and ever. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in praise as we sing our opening hymn, which is, I heard the voice of Jesus say, If you have a Voices United, it's number 626.
Today's reading is from Book of Psalms, number 34, verses 1 to 10 and verse 22. This is a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So ends the reading, God's word for God's people. This reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, we are now the children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. God's word for God's people. Thanks, Aaron, for the wonderful meditative music that you set for us for this All Saints Day message. And as I was preparing this week for, the, for this message and doing some research on the history of All Saints Day and when it began, you know, it wasn't something that was taught in any of my church history classes. I kept hearing another tune running around in my head, maybe one that you're familiar with as well. 
goes a little bit like this. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go... Now, I'm sure you finished those last words that I didn't put in there. And I'm sure you're going to thank me later during the coffee time for now putting that tune into your head, and maybe for a few days to come as well. Now that popular jazz tune, which was made famous by Louis Armstrong in 1939, no one knows the origin of, or at least that's what Wikipedia says. They do believe that it was taken for something that was titled when the Saints Are Marching In, which was written in 1896 by Catherine Purvis, who provided the lyrics for James Milton Black's music. Now, what Deborah played is upbeat and danceable, right? You could probably get up if she continued to, to play it and dance around your living room or your dining room table. Actually, if you look at all the verses of this popular tune that I sang and Deborah played, it includes a verse about drums. It includes a verse about trumpets, even the red moon that, that would be seen, and where the saints will welcome the departed through the pearly gates. It's a wonderful way to start the day with an upbeat song and reflect on All Saints' Day. Now, saints are not in our faith tradition. However, we know that there are many Protestant churches here in Oakville and other places that have saints' names attached to them, such as St. John's, which was the beginning of Maple Grove. We also know about St. Paul's. I could ask you as well, have you been in another Protestant church, whether it be United or Presbyterian or Methodist, if it was in the United States, that are also named after the saints. I'm sure you would be able to mention several of them. And why would a denomination that doesn't observe saints in our tradition use those names? Simply, it's because of tradition. The tradition of our faith in honoring saints. My home church, where I spent many years, is named First St. Andrews. It was a combination of two churches more than 100 years ago, and one was St. Andrew. Definitely that church has Scottish roots. The United Church in Canada does believe in saints, but not in the same manner as the Roman Catholic Church. We recognize Matthew and Paul, John and Luke, and the other early followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the saints are with a small s, not a capital S, as known by the Roman Catholic tradition. We also recognize and celebrate all saints' days today and all the saints who from their labors rest. What we are encouraged to do on All Saint Day is to take time to remember Christians of every time and every place, honoring those who lived faithfully and shared their faith with those of their generation. Now, some of you may go to the cemetery to leave flowers at your loved one's graves today, or you've already done that. However, our denomination does not make any and have any system whereby people are elected to sainthood as they do in the Roman Catholic tradition. We do not pray to saints, nor do we believe that they serve as mediators to God. In our United Church of Canada, we believe there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and ourselves, and that is Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all. 
as you may recall in an earlier reading, not done today from 1 Timothy in the second chapter. Now, I feel it's fair to call many people saints because they exemplify the Christian life. In this sense, every Christian can be considered a saint. I bet you know people in your life that you've considered a saint, that have influenced your life, have seen you through struggles and many toils and tribulations as well. They may not make it to beatification in the Roman Catholic tradition, but to you they've provided you that immense support, that love and acceptance along your journey. They are probably non-judgmental people who help you in times of trouble or have helped you in those times of trouble. They're the no-questions-asked type person And they come to help whenever you needed a helping hand. Now, John Wesley, from the Methodist background, believed we have much much to learn from the saints. Saints with a small s. But he did not encourage anyone to worship them. He expressed much concern over the Church of England and what they were doing. The Church of England, which we know as the Anglican Communion. He was questioning their liturgical practices. It was through his protests that John Wesley is credited with the Methodist movement and a break away from the Church of England. Sound a bit familiar to someone else that I talked about last week? Now, as Leslie wrote, read for us from Psalm 34, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those that take refuge in him. Happy are many that have lived their lives in the shadow of the cross and embraced the empty tomb to then be called to help no matter who so whatever calls, whoever it is that is in need. As I've already stated, perhaps you know a person that has been a saint to you. During my year of discernment, with the United Church of Canada, to be accepted as a candidate for ordination, I selected a friend, a scholar, not of theology. She was a PhD in sociology. She and I would have the most engaging conversations about my call into ministry, how I knew I was called to ordain ministry, and during that time that she spent with me, she was there to support me and to encourage me to lift me up when some of the questions that were being asked were tough. Who Those questions ranged from who do I put my trust in? Do I believe in the triune God? And if so, why? Who was Jesus Christ in my life? Now, the various committees from Presbytery, it was, Presbytery was still enacted then, and the conference from which I was ordained would ask deep belief questions as they would want to get to the root and where I heard the call. Their role was to be as helpful as possible, even when it felt like I was on the hot seat. Always during these meetings, and with the various examining committees, which I probably make it sound a little bit grueling, but it actually wasn't, there were instructions from the committees for my supporter. I was always permitted to bring a supporter. In fact, it was frowned upon if I ever attended any of these interviews without a supporter. But my supporter could only sit and listen and could not answer. However, each time that I finished being questioned and was prayed over. My supporter and I would exit the room, and a few steps out in the hallway, my friend would make the, you did it, cha-ching sort of gesture. You would have thought I scored a touchdown. However, it was her support for not only being my human friend, but she was a hopeful saint in so many ways. 
But I also recognize that it was the Holy Spirit's presence with me and within me as I answered those questions about my call into ministry. It was and still is my deep conviction of the saving grace of Jesus Christ for you and me on our journeys. It was and is my love of God and the blessings that, I, that have been a significant part of my faith journey that became evident through those interviews and many hours of discernment. And perhaps you have a story of a person that you consider a saint in your life and has been helpful along your journey. These stories that we, maybe you have stories that you'll be able to share with me in the days, weeks, and months to come, either by phone or physically distancing. We may even be connecting through Zoom in order to share time and our stories together. There are many people that I look at as saints in my life, from mentors to teachers to street people who have been the face of God at those times and have influenced my life. They have shown me what it is to be a follower of Jesus the Christ. See what the love See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that's what we are, as Liz read from 1 John in the third chapter earlier in the service. We shall be called the children of God, the hopeful and the helpful. I also want to call out the other various other saints that walk this earth due to their helpfulness and hopefulness, and they may not get any recognition from any institution of the church universal. I think of the changes that have been made and continue to take place with the leaders of the Me Too and Black Lives Matter movements the leaders of the homeless initiatives, not only here in Oakville, but other places in our country. The leaders that we hear about in our everyday lives that are leading the research for a vaccine to defeat COVID-19, and hopefully from that, other strains of this virus. Those are the saints that are every day working, going about their work, and to include the frontline workers and those in health care are special saints that are making their mark for all of us. Now, the list is too long for me to mention all those essential and frontline workers, but we give thanks today and many more days for the work that they are doing to keep us safe, to take care of us, if we were to become sick. And there are many other saints that are feeding those that are going without enough sustenance currently because of this pandemic. I pause and give thanks to remember those saints not only from the days gone by, but those that are with us right now, but not wanting or needing any recognition for the joy and help they provide to others. It is through their lessons, through their examples, that we see the saints of today and how we can be more like them. Oh, for the helpful and hopeful, you are my friends. Oh, for my helpful and hopeful, you are definitely my friends. Yeah, you gonna be in that number when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Again, you can thank me for putting this tune in your ear, which will stay with you for many days. But, and it will not leave your minds today 
or tomorrow. And maybe you'll think about it as well as you think about those saints in your life. And give thanks to God for those saints and the many others that have come before us. Amen. Good morning. Let us be joyful stewards of all God has entrusted to us. Our 2021 stewardship camp campaign is well underway. This year's theme is Loving Our Neighbors, inspired by one of the Ten Commandments. It is the time of year when we raise awareness of the time, talent, and treasure needs of our church. By now, you should have received an email with a link to our website with the 2021 stewardship letter, narrative budget, and commitment pledge sheet are posted. If you cannot access the documents, please contact Bobby Jo as she has printed a few hard copies and she should get one to you. Please consider giving an intentional and meaningful gift to this ministry by printing off and completing the commitment pledge sheet found on the website and placing it in the lockbox in the back of our church. Our hope is to increase our donations by 4% over our total from last year to cover our increased costs. Listen for your own call and respond with generosity. The church needs you. The gifts of God that come to us through the work of many hands and the commitment of many lives over many centuries through our donations, whether it be through PAR, our weekly offerings, or our weekly envelopes. Ah, I forgot one key word in the opening sentence. I thought, that doesn't sound right. The gifts of God that we enjoy come to us through the work of many hands and the commitment of many lives over many centuries. Whether it be and been through their donations, just like our donations today, whether or not we give through par or envelopes or by sending a check into the church or by clicking on the Donate Now button on the Maple Grove web pages. We give our gifts to honor God and all God's saints, all those that have come before us and walk with us, praying that we too may be a blessing to those that come after us. Let us join together in the prayer over the gifts that have been offered as the words will be displayed on your screen. Generous God, we give you thanks for your steadfast love, which has inspired so many lives to give generously. Bless the gifts we offer to you and bless our lives so that our discipleship will also be marked by the generosity of our hearts and hands that witness to your love. In Christ's name, amen. I invite you to join me in prayer. Prayers for ourselves and for those that we think of near and far. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we thank you for the many people who have followed your way of life joyfully. For the many saints, the men and women who have offered up their lives so that your life abundant may become reality and your kingdom, kingdom may advance for all. O oh Lord, we thank you for the truth that has been learned and passed on to us. Give us courage to follow a new way of life for your love and faithfulness. We will at all times praise your name. We pray for the millions in our world who go hungry today all who are exploited and marginalized because of their station in life or class, their color or sex, that they may not lose their hope and may find the strength to struggle for their dignity. We call upon you for those who are persecuted, imprisoned, tortured, or threatened with death because of their witness to justice and peace. 
for those who have disappeared because they dared to speak, that their spirits may not be broken by their body's pain. We remember those who live in regions torn by tension and war, by disaster, famine, and poverty, by fires, by hurricanes, those people that are struggling with the coronavirus and many other diseases. Lord, into your hands we commend our earth, ever threatened with disaster, natural and human-made. In all persons and situations we have spoken about, we remember in the silence of our hearts this day. Strengthen our will, O God, for peace and justice. Increase our faith in your kingdom, where love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will embrace. We ask this as we pray the words Jesus taught us when we're together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come together on this All Saints Day, invited to the table of grace, to the table that is set for all of us. Our table in the United Church of Canada is open to all, regardless of denomination. We invite you now into the service of communion. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And all who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. With Christians throughout the centuries, we gather around these symbols. The bread and the juice, or wine, as some may have in their traditions. Simple elements that speak of nourishment and transformation. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath, that your love is constant and unfailing. We thank you for all that sustains life, and especially for Jesus Christ, who teaches us how to live out an ethic of justice and peace, and for the promise of transformation through his life, death, and resurrection. We ask you to bless this bread and this cup, through this meal, make us the body of Christ, that we may join with you in promoting the well-being of all creation. Amen. We remember on the night when Jesus and the disciples had their last meal together. Jesus took the bread and gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this as often when you are together in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to being his disciples just as the saints did before us. In the same way that he took the bread, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the symbol of the cup, we participate in the new life, 
that Jesus brings. We proclaim with all the angels in heaven, for Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Friends, all things are prepared for our feast. Let us come and receive the love that Jesus has given to you and me. And for the saints that have come before us and will come after us. The bread of life given for you and for me. Drink from the cup of salvation, the cup of love given for you. As you partake with the elements at home, there will be music in the background played by Deborah and Aaron. And when you're finished your elements, you can sing along with the lyrics as displayed on your screen. Come now, for all is prepared. Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith, just as it did the saints that we honor today, as your feast increases our love for one another. We have been fed by the seed that becomes grain and then becomes bread, and the seed that becomes the grape, which in turn becomes the juice that transforms. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, helping us to transform your kingdom and to be the hope that many are ready to receive in his name. Amen. As we have been refreshed and ready for our journey, let us now lift our voices in praise as we sing loudly the sending hymn about the saints in our lives. From Voices United, number 705, we will just do verses 1 to 3. For all the saints. <laughs>
Let us go now as sent by the one who has, was sent by God. Walk in the light of Christ. Testify to the love of Jesus and may peace abide with you and yours this day and forevermore. And may God bless you with life forever. May Christ Jesus breathe his spirit and peace into you. And may the Holy Spirit lead you into the life of transformation. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh.